No matter who you are or where you live, if your passion is hunting, then make your dreams come true. Join us on a great safari and adventure as we traverse five continents in search of world's finest hunting trophies. Join the best professional hunters in the world in search for the best trophy animals. You will experience unforgettable hunting adventures and international cultures that few people on earth get to know. Share the thrill of the ultimate challenge to promote the sustained use of world's greatest renewable resources, wildlife conservation and fair chase hunting. Feel the excitement, share the passion, join the experience of the ultimate adventure that this world has to offer. Let Safari Season take you there. On today's episode of Safari Season, we would accompany our highly respected and former president of Safari Club, the bow hunter Gary Bogner. An exceptional erudite, a person of faith, and a hunter by heart. Now let us get back to Bulgaria to see how Gary's hunting ended there.
After the nearly two days tour of the Balkan, Gary was ready to choose his next trophy animal, and indeed his eyesight stopped onto a quite elderly fallow deer with large and massive antlers. They'd followed the animal through one of the mountainous passages and knew relatively precisely where to look for it. It is well proven that fallow deer get attached to their habitats, do not change them unless there is a food shortage or when looking for females during the rut season. Even though they knew where the fallow deer usually goes, stalking it inside the bald forest seemed impossible without the cover-up of leaves and shrubs. These animals are exceptionally careful and get easily frightened, and the only chance the bow hunter stands when it comes to approaching a fallow deer is during the mating period. Nevertheless, we were not there during that season, and Gary had to try with something else, for example, like a masking tent. This has its advantages and disadvantages. The good thing about it was that Gary could prove close to the fallow deer without it rushing away in a panic. The bad thing about these tents is that it takes animals time to get used to them, before turning into effective cover-up of the hunter. Until the fallow deer we were looking for got used to the tent stretched next to the usual game pathway, Gary decided to transfer his hunting skills to another animal. The shot had fallen too low and the wound was about to kill the mouflon, but until then it would have run far away and the hunter would have to say goodbye to the trophy to the favor of wolves. I'm so happy being here and so excited. I got to get it under control. The emotion, the buck fever is just, but we don't want to get the sheep all wound up and running hard and fast away. We want him to get sick uh, so we can find him and recover him much easier. They do a good job, very good job. They know how to hunt. With the dog's help, Gary once again had a trophy almost lost. No. 
Now let us see one of the hardest to hunt representatives of the high mountainous inhabitants in Bulgaria, the Ibex. Gary has the incredible chance to try shooting down one of the single quite old and defined to be shot down Ibexes that were reintroduced more than 70 years ago into the Bulgarian mountains. Ibexes. These virtuoso climbers love the almost vertical mountainous regions where they are untouchable by all predators since they could see from afar the lower slopes and meadows. The hunting march was foretelling a heavy tour until making it to their favorite rocky tops. Gary's task was not easy at all. He was about to be looking for a needle in a haystack, even in a dozen haystacks. Nevertheless, the good news was that hunting guides had been observing the animals in the last four to five months, and they knew in which haystack Gary could look for his one meter needle. You could see the Alpine Ibex as an altitude from 2,000 to 4,600 meters in the European Alps. In the 80s of the 20th century, Alpine Ibexes were imported in Bulgaria from Sweden, and these were being disseminated around the Musula and Botev summits. They got successfully adapted only in Rila, and there their numbers went up to 80 animals. Over the last communist years, almost all the animals were killed by poachers and only single families moved to another high mountainous localities. The Ibexes usually go grazing early in the morning and at dusk, whereas during the rest of the day they doze hiding in the rocky niches at great altitude with good visibility of the surrounding area. They feed on high mountainous grasses, shrubs, moss, lichen, roots, sometimes with tree bark. For the right over the female harem, they get into the battles while hitting their heads with their large horns in the typical manner standing up on their rear legs to gain better acceleration. This typical battling manner could be explained by the small space which the opponents usually have and the impossibility to get acceleration. Their life expectancy is around 15 to 20 years. What is typical about them is that when an animal gets too old, it loses its precious, as soft as rubber, hoof part, and it becomes impossible for it to climb the rocks. Then these animals usually fall prey of the wolves during the winter. The Alpine Ibex is a precious hunting trophy, and its meat is exceptionally delicious, and every part of its body, even the feces, were used in the past for preparing various cures and magical teas. In the regions in which it was initially disseminated, after almost 10 years of poaching destruction, in 2000, they counted only 14 animals, and until the end of 2004, only three remained. Because of the catastrophic species decline in 2005 in Stara Planina, in the region of the Baba Summit, at 1,780 meters above sea level, another 40 ibexes were disseminated, and the last count done in 2007 that took place in the region of the second dissemination fills us with hope for the species future with the 63 counted animals.
you've just witnessed an incredible event. It turned out to be incredibly lucky because the forestry workers had marked that animal long ago because of its age. He was going to go behind all these trees. Both veterans got lucky. Gary got his trophy and the Ibex remained in the forest because it could no longer climb with its worn out and ill hooves. And instead of turning into food for the wolves, it was about to leave for the USA and the money from shooting it down was about to help for protecting the other animals against poachers' attacks. We come a long ways from the truck this morning. Professional hunter, whatever you want to call them in Bulgaria, I'm not quite sure what they are here, but they decided to take us high here and thought the animal was this way. Uh, is alpine ibex and it existed in Bulgaria like some 2,000 years ago but then sort of became extinct and over some 50 years ago was reintroduced again and has made a big comeback. Very big. It's sought after. It's considered a real, real trophy in all of Europe and it's my first time to come for it. Uh, but we are in the Balkan Mountains, is where we're at. And my new friend here played such an important role, we would have never, never gotten them if it wasn't for all the team, the camera people, the people behind me, our guides. Uh, they have so far made this trip. Thank you. Bless your family. I, I'm, I'm, thank, you. thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys are incredible people. Exciting. Yeah, I, I think you're happy now. <laughs> right? I've been happy all the time. I've just been very nervous. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nichols didn't have to shoot. Good. I shot through a little hole in the tree. In the last week, while Gary was busy with tracking the Ibex, the forest workers had placed the tent in such a manner that allows the follow deer to get used to it. It was time to check whether out the tactics were successful.
It seemed that Yana was about to help Gary once again in tracking the wounded fallow deer. We're going on a recovery now. We have the dog, the same one that helped get the mouflon, and we're running out of daylight, but they feel it's right here, just over this hill here someplace. So let's, let's hope this happened this morning. It's been a fantastic experience, and our host gal and owner uh, has just uh, done everything to help us succeed in every way possible that he, he could do with him and his guides, his trackers, his scouts, everything. We came down to the very last day here. We're supposed to leave very early, uh, late tonight to catch a flight to, out of Sofia tomorrow morning. And uh, this morning we're using the blind. We made a shot, it was about uh, 50, 55 meters and the animal wouldn't stop walking and it started to run away and at leading us uh, twice now to, to recover. That's the way it is when bow hunting. The results are only possible thanks to the joined efforts of the participants in that adventure. From the organizer and the hunter to the hunting dog, everyone with his share in the success of another adventure with safari season. Gary Bogner managed to take down a fallow deer once again, as well as reindeer and an ibex with his bow and arrows. Two years later, Gary visited Bulgaria once again after being invited by Sani, and it turned out to be successful once again after taking down the new world record of Balkan Chamoy with a bow and arrow. Excitement 